Hey everyone, Edgy Berserker here with another watercolor talk series. I started the series with the knowledge of knowing that not only will I talk about watercolor paint, but I will talk about watercolor markers, as well as watercolor pencils. Kind of the reason I started the channel in the first place, because I was tired of seeing a lot of like big artists being afraid of watercolor pencils. I'm like, come on, they're not that hard. <laughs> But, uh, yo, I have so many of these pencils. Uh, my favorites actually being Derwent. I'm going include to the, include the Inktense ones as well. Those ones are, like, kind of my, like, top-tier faves. But I've been dabbling with a bunch. And, of course, the people voted. And uh, we got the uh, Spectrum Noir Aqua Blend. Now, that's the Portrait Collection. Because guess what? I also have the Essentials Collection. Now, when I looked on the Amazon and to see um, how much these cost, we're looking at like almost like 40 to $50 per set. But you see, I am but a thrifty shopper because I got these at Marshall's for, this one was $9.99 and this set was $19.99. Now, the reason why is because minor dent in the tin, that's it. The pencils are absolutely without a doubt fine. And also I did some swatching because I like to do that. And um, yeah, it's a must actually with these pencils. Because if you notice, if you notice some of these barrels don't really match the colors. Um, I think in the portrait set actually they have a color that does not match at all. Give me one Minorino. Yeah, the one called Watermelon. Look at that pink, okay? Now look at it match to that. Not quite the same, you know? A few of the colors don't match, but that's why you swatch. That's why you have a guide. And thankfully, this is on the paper that I'm gonna be using for our artwork. So set that aside for a minute, cause I'm gonna have these off to the side anyways, when I work with them. We're gonna also show that you can marry digital art with watercolors and markers and whatnot. I did this uh, artwork of Ken digitally but I copied it onto the paper. How do you know? Because I made a mistake on the setup the first time. Oopsie doodle. <laughs> so yeah, this is how I do a lot of like um, marker art and even some watercolor pencil art. Because if I mess up, it's not borked. <laughs> so those who like to do uh, line art on the computer, absolutely fine. Um, key thing then is though, this is done on a toner based uh photocopier not an ink based one i don't know how well watercolors react to those the inkjet so just heads up this was done on a photocopier knowing how to set up the paper to the right thickness and putting it through and all that so and just so you know that's the technique i use uh, often i have a lot of artworks where i actually do this including marker and uh i did a lot of watercolor marker funny enough with it but yeah We'll just uh, start with this and go ahead. I'm going to try to teach you uh, some tips and tricks with these. Uh, this is going to be my first serious artwork with the uh, Spectrum Noirs. So this should be interesting. I'll give you the good points, high points. Uh, my base being Derwent as my favorite for feeling that. So we'll just go ahead from there and uh, we'll cut to voiceover edgy. So let's do it to it. Okay, let's start on this. So you see me laying the color down, but I'm not being neat about it. That's the key thing with uh, watercolor pencils. You don't have to be neat about it because you're going to be pushing that pigment around. And uh, as long as the pencils work well, of course, uh, they, uh, you got to move the pigment around. That smooths things out. And of course, uh, you don't want to do too much detail because you can layer these. Uh, first time using these, uh, I gotta say, uh, they felt waxy, and I was like, uh-oh, I sure hope these work okay. I mean, when I did the swatching, they worked okay, but that's just a swatch. Are they gonna layer? I don't know. Oh no, oh no. But I'm happy to report that these work wonderfully. Um, I think that they're actually, I'll just start off by saying that they're actually a pretty good mid-grade, uh, pencil. Um... I would say though, uh, don't get it at the price that they offer on Amazon. Get it on sale. <laughs> and of course, now you can see that the color's popping uh, as I add the water. 
And, uh, but it's light still, because obviously I need to add more to it, you know? And so, yeah, just kind of like, it moves nicely. Um, I've never used hot press for this before, so I'm actually really enjoying using hot press for uh, watercolor pencils. Um, I should use a textured paper next time I do one of these, though, just to kind of show the differences in that. Um, I probably do it with my Derwins and my Ink Tents just because I know those supplies well. <laughs> so yeah, I've just, I, the other key thing to w do with watercolor pencils is work a section at a time. So you saw me do the hair. I'm letting it dry now because I'll be adding more layers later. So now I'm adding the color for the, um, his, uh, karate gi. And, uh, I gotta say... Uh, doing the photocopy technique worked wonderfully because if I did bork this, no big deal. I could make a new copy, unbork it, try again. <laughs> I could almost use this artwork as a constant to compare different materials, but that, what would the fun be in that? <laughs> but yeah, um, when I do my digital line art, I actually, I don't use Photoshop or anything really. I use Fire Alpaca. It's a free program. On Steam, you can have the offer of uh, getting rid of the um, advertising at the front. I threw them a few extra bucks because I'm happy with the program. So that's what I use. I don't need a lot. I'm happy with how the uh, quote-unquote inking feels with it. So yeah, um, this was perfect. Of course, now I'm getting the water brush happening on the karate gi. And as you can see, you can kind of see with a pigment being moved around actually with the water, which is pretty cool. Um, I like using the water brushes. Uh, I'm going to probably mention this in the ending, actually, but the water brushes, I think I like the best for these because, you know, when I did the unboxing for my Candyman video, um, the brush that they included was really soft. <laughs> and I feel like it doesn't get enough grip to push the pigment around uh, when you're doing a watercolor pencil artwork. So... I highly recommend the water brushes, which have like more of the stiffer nylon-y feel to them. I guess the uh, next up for that would be like an acrylic brush, I want to say. Just one that can hold water, but it's not soft and, you know, wa like flowy and that. I'm going back to the hair now, but that's the important part. You can also see the yellow that I got from Ken's ha uh, blonde hair. And then the back of the pencil there being more dark brownish. Um... Yeah, that's why you swatch your stuff. Because <laughs> I would have gotten the wrong color out of that for sure. But I'm just adding more layers because it dried nice. Um, I'm happy to report that this layers nicely. Thank goodness. Because uh, I've had issues um, with that on some things. Uh, but the key thing is just let it dry. Patience. Because I don't use a hair dryer to dry because I don't have a hair dryer. <laughs> As you can see, the hair is popping even more now. Um, of course, if you're a part of my Patreon, you already knew I was drawing this because I posted up the artwork to free to download of the line art for people to try out for themselves to color it in. So yeah, I did that. And um, yeah, it's pretty cool though that like you can actually marry digital and traditional together. I don't want people to be afraid of watercolor pencils. Because you can see here, especially how messy I am with the uh, laying down the color. Because I know the neat part is going to be when I'm using the water brush. And the nice thing is, even though I went off the lines there under his armpit there, we fixed it later. It worked out well. <laughs> yeah, you can see the pigment being dragged across. That's kind of the key thing there. You need a brush that can move it around. Because, again, I had that issue with the brush that they gave me in that one up crate. But that, and that's why I switched to the uh, actual water brush. Because I'm like, mm, I need to move this around. <laughs> so I'm here to let everyone know, don't be afraid of watercolor pencils. It's okay. It's okay. You don't have to make, like, the biggest, beautifulest art right away. Practice. Practicing's fine. And, again, you don't have to be detailed and neat or in the initial coloring part. You can just slap that pigment down. Uh, go thick where you know you want to be thick, but go light where you know you want to have it go light, you know? That's really it. Uh, I do like adding, like, the lights and darks on top. I don't like doing it after. And work in sections. Because, again, as you can see, I'm just, like, adding in sections. 
and working in sections. Because uh, if you need to add more to it, you can just add more to it after. And, of course, you can see the red's now popping really hard because we added the extra layer. Um, yeah, that's the thing. I find these ones aren't as pigmented as an ink tense, but ink tense is more of an ink than a watercolor, granted. Um, I've used the Winsor & Newton watercolor pencils, and they do lay down a lot of pigment, which is where, like, working in small areas is a good thing. But these ones, though, they go on light at first, but that's not an issue because you can at least go back, add more details if you'd like. And yeah. So yeah, oh, watercolor pencils. Don't be afraid of them. Try them out. Enjoy them. There may be some uh, brands that aren't good. There may be some uh, even better ones than what I'm using right now. That's fine though because uh, I'm going to try to cover as much as we can, of course. That's kind of the plan. But anyways, though, I hope everyone has had a nice, relaxing holiday season. Not just, like, you know, stress. <laughs> I'm actually fine. I finished my Christmas shopping as the day of recording this voiceover. I, uh, I, w I also treated myself to go to the art store. Um, and because I'm such a good customer, the owner gave me, funny enough, a watercolor brush. And I've used that brand before because that came in my upgrade with the super soft one. But that's great for washes and stuff for when I'm using actual watercolor. And it's a nice brush. It's a great brush. It holds water excellently. Um, I thanked him profusely. And he's like, ah, it's because you're such a good customer. I always see you here every month. I'm like, aw, come here a lot, don't I? Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, that's, that's why you shop your locals. Like, seriously, if you have a local art store, support the heck out of it. You, you'd be surprised how much, you know, the uh, like, you get to learn about the community in that. And yeah, I mean, I'm not a talkative person, I'll admit it. But, you know, once I get recognized in that, I feel a little more comfortable talking to it, right? So it's really cool though. It was really cool, super nice. Shout outs to Bijan's Art Studio. Excellent art store in my city. Check it out. Uh, it's the only local one left because the only other one is Michael's. <laughs> Nothing against Michael's, but you know what? I prefer the local art stores over big box any day. <laughs> Plus where am I gonna get my Holbein watercolors and my Daniel Smith ones for cheap? <laughs> Certainly not Michael's. <laughs> Ooh, when I was doing his glove things, I actually used a color that was called for like deep forest green for the gray because it's more of a grayish, not even green, but bluish tone. And I quite dug it. So like, I gotta say this one has a good palette to it. Like, I, I mean, granted, though, how they get you, this is why I'm saying get them on sale. They, as you saw, even with the Amazon post up, they have different sets. The portrait set, the primary set, the essential set, things like that. That's how they get you. Uh, the portrait set does not have a black in it. Fun fact. It only has dark umber. But the other set I got does have black in it, which means there's a high chance the other sets do not have black in it so keep in mind like I've noticed this with some things including some uh, dollar store pencil crayons that I'll eventually try out which I'm gonna spoiler alert they're surprisingly decent <laughs> but are they worth the price though when you buy the sets though but I'll we'll worry about that later <laughs> and of course here I am doing the background I'm being super messy here uh, as I was doing this, I was watching my friend, uh, Chris Herman of Class in a Glass here on YouTube. Um, he was doing a commentary for the Fatal Fury of the movie. So good. <laughs> he never, he watched the movie before he watched the first and second one, like, because we got mixed up on the request. And he was like, I don't know who these people are. I'm having fun though. It was so wholesome. I implore you to check out Mr. Revan7, a.k.a. Chris Herman of Class in the Glass on YouTube. He is a very entertaining and very nice dude. Do check him out. Of course, like as you can see, I did a nice gradient because I like added colors because layering is so much fun. 
Now, I'm adding like an extra water on there because I was going to show you the slap on the paint technique. Of course, I covered up Ken there. But as I do, seeing I'm slapping the water brush on with the pencil, but I was like, oh, nothing's showing up. But now it's showing up because I just had to get a little juicy is all. Uh, this actually works very well with Derwent and Windsor and Newton pencils. But these ones, it took a little time because I think is there a harder, waxier feel that they needed kind of motivation. Anyways, here's how Ken turned out. As you can see, the splatter effect worked out well. Ken worked up well. And of course, let's let future Edgy talk the way the rest of the way out. All right, so that was the uh, end of the painting. Um, overall opinion on these uh, watercolor pencils. Pretty good. Um, I find that, like, uh, unlike, say, Derwent or Windsor and Newton, when you lay down your first color, you don't get a lot of color out of it. But that's not a bad thing. These ones do layer quite wonderfully, actually. Um, I could have done more with the background, but eh. At least I got to show that, like, splatter technique, though. I don't know if it's going to show well, but if you can see on there... We got a bit of like a splatter happening and I'm very happy with how that turned out. Overall, I gotta say the Spectrum Noir um, watercolor pencils are pretty good. Uh, again, um, you know, they're, they come off a little waxy at the start, but I wonder if it's because like, you know, they're pre-sharpened. Cause once I sharpened a few, you know, cause I needed more color, it, they lay down just nice. Uh, the trick with watercolor pencils is not to layer like you would with a regular pencil crown anyways. Uh, you, the trick is to just kind of build it up and just like lay the color down, but you don't have to get like, you know, like, ooh, we got to fill in all the gaps and that. No, 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 that's what the watercolor part is supposed to do. That pushes your pigment around, fills in the gaps, and then you can add and add and add. And especially with these ones, these ones do allow layering quite nicely, actually. And I was very happy. And again, as my like big old pro tip for these, though, these water brushes are godsend. Uh, the bristles, like this is an old one, as you can tell, I used the hell out of this thing. Uh, the bristles are like more firmer in that, but that's not a bad thing for watercolor pencils because you want to be able to push the uh, pigment around. I found, um, hold on just one sec, I have an actually red pal. The water brush that they gave me with uh, one of my uh, crates, I found was actually like, this is nice for actual watercolors. For watercolor pencils though, I found these bristles just way too soft, way too, and you couldn't move it around. And I think in the Candyman video, you saw me start using a water brush instead. Because again, just easier to move the pigment around. <laughs> so yeah, if you're gonna use any uh, water brushes for it, I'd say like, you know, an actual water brush. Um, it doesn't, like, I think that's a Pentel. I'm not sure, I don't remember. But I also used the Koi ones that came with the Koi watercolor sets. I've used, I haven't used the Arteza or Karen Dash ones, but I hear those ones are pretty decent too. Um, so yeah, you know, you can use any water brush really. They all work just fine. Um, uh, even like a brush that's like more like a synthetic stiffer one, like one they may be used for acrylic. But not like maybe even a gouache brush would probably work better because at least it got a little bit of a stiffness. Because again, it's about moving the pigment. You gotta move the pigment. <laughs> but yeah, I hope uh, even though, like, you know, it's just a small preview of what you can do with watercolor pencils, I hope that it kind of helps with a bit of the uh, fear that some people have with them, you know? Like,. I don't know. These pencils, I like these pencils. These are nice. They're strong. Um, again, uh, you know, they come on waxy when you first put them on, but again, they, they work just fine. They do what you want them to do, darn it all. And I think that's all that matters with these. Anyways, everyone, thank you so much for watching uh, this video. It'll be the only one in December I'm posting because... Christmas time is very, very much a busy time for me, so uh, I don't want to overwork myself. But I'm happy to do more watercolor pencil stuff. And if you want to know any more watercolor pencils, 
let me know because I have quite a few. Um, I even have the Prismacolor ones and I haven't used them yet. So I don't have an opinion formed on them. Um, I could even use the Derwent ones, which I, I'm the most familiar with. They are very well-loved sets that I have. And uh, yeah, either way though, Patreon, thank you for the support. Anyone who's even uh, gone on my Ko-fi and done a commission, thank you so much as well. And anyone who's just watching right now, thank you for the support. So everyone, um, thanks so much. Thanks for hanging out. Have a safe and happy holiday season. And you know what? Leave a like, comment, and a subscribe if you like what you saw here. Anyways, everyone, this is Edgy Berserker signing off, and I will see y'all later. Stay creative. Bye now.